Greetings, fellow measurement aficionados. Today's little session will feature the Hewlett Packard Model 4815A RF Vector Impedance Meter. A very uh, neat device that was first introduced in the HP Journal back in January 1967. Put that in here. And uh, it occupied a place of honor being on the uh, front cover. <coughs> uh, the article begins in pa on page 12, and it uh, mentions that this meter fills kind of a, a gap uh, in the low to moderate Q world. Uh, Q is equal to the tangent of the angle of the impedance. And so uh, zero Q is uh, zero degrees, and infinite Q is 90 degrees, plus or minus 90, then minus 90 would be minus infinity Q, but let's not worry about that. Uh, so the bottom line is the closer you get to 90 degrees, the, the, um, the higher the Q. So when you have a Q of 200 or so, uh, or 1,000, you can't tell the difference with this device. Um, it, it shines up to the point where you're sort of at the 85 degree range, and then you start to lose accuracy because the sensitivity of Q to the angle uh, increases dramatically, becomes infinite, that infinite Q. So anyway, the bottom line is it fills a hole, okay? And uh, it's, it's claim to fame as filling that hole. If you want to measure high Q things, use a Q meter. Um, the other interesting aspect of it is it measures very high impedances. And so as you can see from the front panel here, this magnitude uh, switch uh, goes up to 100 kilo ohms, which full scale, which is quite a high impedance because this is at radio frequencies. Uh, the phase range uh, can be set to be centered at zero or centered at 180. Zero is the normal thing for passive networks because they need a positive real part, and that means the phase angle has to lie between minus and plus 90. Uh, the instrument requires a special probe. The probe is the secret sauce. Without the probe, the instrument is not even a good doorstop or boat anchor. It is pretty much useless. Parts is parts, but mm. it's not going to do you much good. So you have to have this probe. This is critical. Uh, HP provides a way to check the system with a 100 ohm, zero degree uh, known impedance that you plug said probe into. And now you see the meters start to change. And I am on the 100 ohm full scale range here and zero degree center. And as you can see, the left meter has gone to, uh, you can see a one up in the uh, corner here. And uh, the, the degrees meter is at zero. We can zoom in maybe a little bit more here and get a better look at this. There are adjustments that you can make here with the magnitude and phase that's already been done and so these are zeroed out so you're you're calibrated uh, that's all wonderful uh, doesn't really prove that we're measuring 100 ohms because we can adjust the magnitude and phase to make it look like 100 ohms and zero degrees one other thing before i move on is the frequency setting over here to the right we'll hand over here using some Logitech software with a Logitech webcam. Seems to be working pretty well. Um, I've done it set to 14 megahertz. You can see that in the right dial. It's not quite set to 14 megahertz, but actually it is. Um, it has an RF output. We pan down here and, and have a look. It has an RF output that you can use to drive a counter for more precise setting. And so I've got a little Radio Shack 
counter here, and you can see 13.9947. I could dial it in closer, but it doesn't matter. Um, we are at 14 megahertz for all practical purposes. Very hand handy thing, these little Radio Shack counters, say. Um, one of their best products. And they didn't have many. Okay, so that's 14 megahertz, and we're all set. Now, set for what? Well, to measure a Reels GUT, so uh, our device under test. So I'll zoom back out, and um, I have an adapter here. This is another unobtainium piece. It slips over the probe. And on the adapter, I have a 2 kilo ohm measured to be actually 1,998 ohms at DC. Um, essentially, a 2K ohm resistor. It's a carbon film resistor. So we're going to measure that now at a frequency of 14 megahertz. So I take out my probe, and I slip this adapter on here, and we're now measuring the device under test, the film resistor. We'll change the full-scale range here to 3 kilo ohms. And now I'm going to zoom in on the meters again to get an accurate reading. Sorry for the clicking. But I think you can see here that this meter is reading 1900 on the nose, because this is the 3 kilo ohm range. 1.9 is, is 1,900 now on this range. And the angle is minus 18 degrees. Okay? So we have 1,900 ohms of magnitude and a minus 18 degree phase. Now, you might say, well, that's a little strange because, first off, you're measuring a 2K ohm resistor, and a resistor should have zero phase. Uh, but there's the nasty little element called capacitance. And not only does the probe itself have a little residual capacitance, but that adapter has capacitance. So we actually are now measuring the effect of the capacitance of the adapter by, by this, this phase change. All right, now let's zoom back out and do a little computation on this data. As some of you hopefully know. Uh, there are equivalent circuits here for um, impedance, and so at one frequency, uh, at on old, and only one frequency, I can take any impedance and represent it as a parallel capacitor and resistor. And so the equations for the CP and RP are given in the upper right, and if I substitute in 1900 ohms and minus 18 degrees and 14 megahertz, I get an equivalent parallel capacitance of 1.85 picofarads, and no kidding, I'm not kidding you here, an equivalent resistance of 1,998 ohms. Okay, a lab instructor a long time ago told me something. He said, Benson, choose your examples wisely. I couldn't get more wise with this one, could I? All right. Now, if I measure just the fixture with no resistor, I get a capacitance of 1.47 picofarads. And so therefore, the capacitance of the actual device under test, that being the film resistor, is the difference. It is our uh, 1.85 minus 1.47, or 0.39 picofarads, which is uh, quite a reasonable uh, number for such a device. So there you go. Uh, this machine covers from a half a megahertz up to 108. Interesting number, 108, huh? I wonder what gave them that idea. Um, over several ranges. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting design. It was, I think, ahead of its time. Um, it employed sampling techniques. Uh, it employed phase lock techniques, uh, and these these techniques ended up um, fueling subsequent developments of vector network analyzers, which uh, really ushered in the um, S-parameter characterization of networks, which has stood the test 
of time to this very day for linear networks. So uh, quite a piece of history and uh, uh, a very nice, uh, a nice device for measuring impedances at radio frequencies. So thanks for listening. I hope this uh, recording came out okay. I'm using, again, Logitech software for this and a Logitech 920 C920 uh, webcam, which is a pretty nice device also. So with that, take care. Stay well. Over and out.